So to show this a little bit better in, in action, I'm going to go ahead and create a P-bomb. And I'm going to place it sort of behind and below it. I'm going to turn the P-bomb on so it starts at frame zero and lasts, let's say, just two frames. And then if I come back over here and add the force, You can see it's now blowing up to the side. And we, of course, can lower that number so it's not blowing up so crazy. And we can play with, with the P-bomb. And this is the great thing with using this to sort of simulate these larger pieces of geometry is this is so interactive that if you wanted to play with, you know, I, I need to have this thing blowing out more towards the camera, you just move this around and it becomes very fast to simulate. And also the nice thing is, is if, um, let me go ahead and turn off the particles for a second and bring back up the fragment set. And I'm going to just isolate it so we only have that on the screen. I'm going to make a couple copies of it. And then just hide them all again. And now, turn the particles back on. You see we have all these columns, and as it moves forward, they all blow up. And of course, you can add in the other forces of gravity, wind, drag, uh, you know, to add some chaos to all this. But this is a really fast way to be able to break apart objects like this and, you know, to get sort of a simulation feel without going through as much uh, work and pain as it would be to, to do it in a real simulation where you have to be a lot more careful about a lot of things. So with that said, let's move on to our uh, glass scene. So I loaded up the uh, glass shooting scene. So this is, um, scene was broken up into three uh, pieces and composited together. So the first piece is just the bullet shots in the glass with the, the glass debris flying back and forth. The next piece actually has this top piece break off uh, and it's animated and it falls to the ground. And then the third piece is it breaking up into chunks. So. How I did the, the glass breaking is just a simple transparency map, which I'll include with the tutorial files too. But And then I used the particle flow icon to just move from piece to piece as it was shooting off. And let me go ahead and start turning on some of the particles. So here is the whole particle flow. And I'm going to go from left to right, turning on things as we go. But just turning on the first one turns on our glass that's blowing up from behind. Let me change so you can see it probably better on this left-hand side. So you see the debris flying, and there's U-deflectors on the ground and the back plane, so you get the bounce of that. And once it bounces three times, it actually goes to another event, which causes it to stop spinning and, and causes it to stop moving so that it comes to a nice stop. Now the glass shards themselves was created very simply using the MB Fracture script and all I did was I took a box and applied the MB Fracture to it and cut it up into a bunch of different pieces, grouped it together and put it off to the side and then used it in my shape instance right here. 
So it's the glass shards, it's the group members, and I scaled it down to only 14% with a lot of variations. So I get some big chunks and some small chunks. So the next event, which was just really a copy of all this, reverses the direction that the particles are flying out. So you now see that there's particles flying out and they're very small. So we got particles flying out through the front. And in this case, I used the same shape but I changed the scale way down to only 2% with a smaller variation because I just wanted it, some misty type glass flying out through the front. So that's all I needed to do to render the very first part of this animation. So the next part, I'm gonna turn off that main plane and bring up the broken one. So all I did for this was I went into ProCutter and I cut and I created a, a, a line that I extruded right along where I think the crack would have been along here. So this is actually now another piece of geometry. And all I did was I uh, then just did a simple animation of it rolling and falling off the front like that. And I played with the timing a little bit, a bunch, um, and then decided that the contact was going to be hit at, at, at frame 52. So with that, and I rendered this out with it falling along with all the other particles that was going. So then I took this particular piece um, and ran the fragment tool again on this and then used Bobo script to create the chunks. So I'm going to go ahead and hide that piece so now you see and I have a, a little p-bomb that's right here that just blows this up so that's like this big slab of glass came down so you can see the two sort of together it comes down hits that and then it blows back up and then finally just to add in some more glass I created some smaller shards that's sort of repeating this pattern over here. Uh, I'm using the same glass shard shape instance played with the size. Uh, for the emitter I use the, the, the broken top at frame 52 so that you get this nice little broken glass pieces falling out. And then that's basically it. Uh, I rendered out the three different sections. I composited it together. I uh, did a just a slight uh, blend when the, the glass was cracking up here so that it would look like the crack sort of comes in from these shots and then it falls down. But I think this gives you a good example of, you know, being able to do, you know, things that are very particle-like, but also being able to break things up into bigger chunks. And, you know, this whole shot with the pieces bouncing around is only half a second, so it's, it's hard to see that some of this is interpenetrating.